Welcome back guys to a brand new video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to take a part that's got a section broken out of it. I'm gonna show you how to take a photo of it, take it to Fusion 360, and then create the section that is missing on that file. Let's just say a customer has sent you a picture of a part that is missing a section there, and you need to take that to Fusion 360, and you're wondering what is the best way to do it. Well, I'll show you how to do that in this video. So the first things that you need are a ruler, a pen, and a white background. I find that a piece of A4 paper is the best because it is a very strong contrast to the part that you've got. You may need to educate your customer to take a photo of their part so that when they send it to you, it's got a white background and it defines the outer perimeter of the part that they want you to cut out really well. So I'm gonna take this part here, take a few measurements, write them down on a piece of paper, take a photo clearly of this part here from a top-down view and as square and true as possible. And then I will take it over to Fusion 360 on my computer and then I'll show you the best way to do it or the best way that I know how to do it. So let's get started. So here we have the part that I was talking about in the clip before. You really only need to take a couple of measurements, if not only one. You just measure the diameter of the holes or just one of the holes. I know that I've previously measured this at 10 millimeters for that hole in diameter. So when we take this to Fusion 360 and you calibrate the image, you just punch in after setting the width of the hole there on the screen of the computer at 10 millimeters in diameter. You press enter and it will populate the rest of the image as far as calibrating the ratio of the image from all the other external outside edge measurements. All right guys, so we've jumped over into Fusion 360. The first thing we're going to do is go up to the sketch option there, select the base uh, plane just there. From there we go up to insert and go to canvas. From this section here we go insert from my computer and you navigate to the folder in which you've got the uh, part picture saved. So for instance, I've got it saved in this folder and then the next step is to select the plane, the same one as we selected before, the base, and then just press enter. All right, so we can zoom in here and we can see that we've got the part picture that we took before in the garage. I like to press the top down view so we can see uh, a better orientation of the image that we've got. From this point, we go to the canvas over here and drop it down, click that, where it says broken part or whatever you've named the file as, right click it and go calibrate. Now, after we've zoomed in, we need to select the outer edge of this hole from there to there. And I know that that is 10 millimeters, so I will punch that in 10 and press enter. What that has done is ratio all the outer edges of this picture to the 10 millimeters we've entered there and it knows that in relation to all the other ratios that it will be able to populate the dimensions of the rest of the picture. After we've done that, what we need to do is we need to go up to sketch and then we select the base plane field as well, just like that. And now we've got the top down view and we can draw our lines around this. So at this point, we start with the circles. I find the easiest way to do it. Instead of trying to find the center, I like to just click anywhere there, press 10, press enter and then what we can do is we can right click the outer edge and go move copy. Grab the square that's in the middle and it allows us to put the circle overlapping the uh, picture that's underneath it. Press enter, we'll do the same thing for the other hole that's down here. Just draw next to it, press 10 because we know the hole is 10 millimeters. Move copy, grab the square and put it over the hole just there. Press enter. Now this section here, I previously measured that at 28 millimeters. So we're gonna do the same thing, click near it, press 28, press enter. And we can grab the edge of the hole, go move, copy, grab the square, 
and bring it over roughly into that area of the image just there. Press enter. So then from this point here, what we do is we just draw in the rest of the lines that are, is on the image, go to the line tool, and when we just click along the edges just there. So after we've drawn the line just there, what I like to do is I can see that the arc is consistent with the circle that's there. So what we do is we'll do another circle and we'll bring that circle out to match that outer arc. And then we'll delete these lines later. And we'll do the same down here on this one. Bring it out so that it's roughly on the outer edge of your under canvas image. Do the same up here. We also know this hole is a 10 millimeter hole as well. So 10 millimeters, press enter, grab the edge, right click, go move and bring that into that section just there and press enter. Continue to draw out the rest of your lines along there. Join them all in. Go from your corners or whatever the image that you've got that you're trying to work with. Now at this point here, because we're trying to populate the section that is missing, we know that the outer radius of, is similar just there as to the outer radius just there of those ones. So we draw that outer circle to get that arc and then we just fill in the rest that is from this section just here to over there. You can do it however you want to shape the part, but I find that that is probably the most consistent with the way that it was originally. So now that we've got all this filled in around the edges, we need to remove some of the extra lines that we don't need. So you grab the trim tool just up there and we start removing these lines that we don't need. So just move around, grab all the ones you don't need. And then I've accidentally removed that one there. So we'll grab the arc three point, just bring that over there. That's good. All right, click escape, hover over, and you can see that all the lines are now connected. If they weren't connected, it wouldn't turn blue when you select it. What I like to do on some of these edges is grab the modify tool, go fill it. And I like to just, you know, chamfer some of those edges just there. It makes it look a little bit neater than it did before rather than be a square edge. From this point, now that we've filled in this section that was cut out just there, I like to grab that and right click and go extrude. Just extrude up one millimeter is all you need to create a 3D object. This helps the uh, manufacturing side of things when you go to set up the G code for your plasma CNC. It just helps it identify what parts are to be cut on the outer edge, on the inner edge, and what the first cuts are going to be as far as the holes and then the outer perimeter. So you don't cut the outer perimeter and then the holes first when it comes to your CNC because that's just an absolute disaster when it does that. So now that I've extruded it one millimeter, we go up to design, manufacture, cutting and then 2D profile. Go to your tool. I've already got it preloaded in my library as my Unimig Razor Cut 45. Then we go and select the body just there, click OK. As long as we've got a green tick there, we know that we've set it up correctly. So it knows to cut on the inside, it knows what the cut paths are. It's one, two, three, four on the outer as the last cut. So we need to take this now to the Plasma CNC, the arc droid that I've got in my garage. We'll cut it out and then we'll compare it to the part that was broken that I initially had at the start of the video.
All right guys, so here we have the part that was broken initially and then the part that we've created using Fusion 360. All right guys, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I hope that you found this video helpful in some way. Remember to like, subscribe and comment down below. All your feedback goes a long way and it helps the channel grow immensely. So until next time, I'll see you in the next one.